Hey, good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, Hurricane Track here. Friday now, the 10th of October, 2025. Good to have you along with me, everybody. we got a lot to talk about again, despite the fact that we do not have a hurricane lurking out there. Doesn't matter. We're going to have impacts. We are already having impacts. And at the end of the day, if there's one thing I want to make sure I teach you fine people out there, it is all about the impact. Doesn't matter what we call stuff. It's about how it affects us. We can be selfish about the weather. That is fine. How is this going to impact me? That's what I want you to ask yourselves. And I'm going to explain it all in this very action-packed update today. Because indeed, we got a lot going on. So let's drop me out of the frame and I'll prove it to you. Uh, the interactive map off the Hurricane Track Insider site. There is Karen. And I'm not even going to go into the details of how this got named. You just need to trust me. It's there. The science matches don't worry about what you read on the internet, that the Hurricane Center needs to scratch off names. Hogwash. It matches all the classifications, believe me. Anyway, I'll show it to you. I'm going to spend very little time talking about it. It is interesting because it's at a high latitude, but it tracks subtropical storm Karen. There you go. There's Jerry having a rough time today down there uh, just northeast. The center is of the islands. I want to show you the satellite. You'll see all the nasty weather is down to the south. And then moving over to the west and southwest, we have newly formed Raymond over here and almost done with its life cycle. Priscilla, all of these systems bringing moisture into the southwestern portions of the U.S. and northwest Mexico. Here's what it all looks like on the satellite today. Let's use the yellow color there. There is Raymond. There is the leftovers of Priscilla and all that moisture already streaming into the southwest. More will come in from Raymond. And this is still going to be a big problem out here. I don't want to ignore that as we begin to really focus more and more on this developing coastal storm out here. Uh, this is going to be problematic, believe me. There's Jerry, though, disheveled as it may be. Look down to the south. In fact, let's just go up here. I want to give it the, uh, the attention that it needs. Look at the infrared. Again, you'd be like, where's the center? Uh, it kind of matters, but it doesn't matter. All of the nasty weather is farther to the south over the islands. The nastiest of the weather, though, the most impactful weather, luckily has moved away. You got the U.S. and British Virgin Islands through here, and then the islands of like Barbuda and St. Bart's and all that over here. And uh, Guadalupe is right there, the little butterfly island, as they call it. So, yeah, disheveled as it may be, Jerry is still there. Maybe the shear or whatever is happening to it will relent and it'll try to make some, something of itself a little later on. So here's a still frame of Karen. I'm only going to spend a very small amount of time on this. Look at that. That is deep convection. It's not very deep, but it's enough, and that's what it's all about. A subtropical storm occurs in the subtropics. It's not sub like subservient or whatever, meaning less than. In this case, it means out of the tropics, subtropical. It's uh, occurring over fairly warm water. Water temperatures, though, are colder than the 80 degrees we normally see, but because air temperatures aloft are so cold, the instability, the ability for this thing to generate convection is there. It is concentrated enough. There's no fronts around. It matches. If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, there you go. This is why the Hurricane Center has this classification. Ships need to know about this. The Hurricane Center doesn't care about your Twitter or your TikTok account. Believe me, or your Facebook. So there you go. They care about educating you, but not your nonsense. So it matches. It's a subtropical storm, and it, yes, it can affect marine interest. That's all I'm going to say. All right. So the uh, Weather Service homepage here. This should be your best friend. Really, bookmark it, weather.gov, and it's open despite the shutdown. That's what it says right up there. We appreciate that very much. Look at what's happening here. And I want you to watch over the coming days. you got to go to this site for me over the next few days and watch how all of this starts to fill in with more and more colors. We see it a lot during the winter when you get a big wintertime storm coming, but this is really going to start to fill out with a lot of, it's going to look like fall colors up there, sort of. All of this is that flood watch stuff because of our tropical cyclone influences in the desert southwest, and that is going to continue as we already talked about. So let's zoom in a little bit here. And I guess switch gears a little bit, look at the modeling. So a couple things to point out. Let's get a better color, blue. There's the vorticity signature of Jerry. Wow, that kind of fell apart. 
And this is the energy that's trying to come together. And just look how large this area of energy is, even though Jerry's disheveled, compared to Jerry. And that's the point of all this. Tropical systems are more bundled. Your extratropical systems, mid-latitude storms, nor'easters, whatever you want to call them, they are much more spread out with their energy. And with that, you get a much larger wind field. So let's move all this out into time. And you notice Jerry, at least according to the GFS, tries to get better organized as our coastal storm. Boy, look at all of that energy. It is going to be raining to beat the band here in the Carolinas, mainly North Carolina, and the adjacent offshore waters as the winds start to crank. The coastal low gets going. All this energy up to the north along the warm front. Yuck. Meanwhile, though, look at Jerry there trying to pull itself together well to the southeast of Bermuda. We shall see how all of that works out. This is 60 hours out, and then finally by day four, and then day five, uh, Jerry's on its way out into the open Atlantic even more, and our coastal storm, as big as it is now, starts to leave the area. Notice, too, I didn't want to just forget that I didn't see it. Remember that storm yesterday that the GFS was showing? Not really there today. You do have that gyre starting to set up here. The way all of this comes around is a counterclockwise large area of rotating energy. Good way to put it, I guess. Nothing pinching off from it in today's run. A few of the ensembles are starting to develop something over here. Hey, it's getting towards mid-October. We know we're supposed to watch that area, so we will, but nothing to worry about right now. So the East Coast, uh, we're in for it. Southeast as well, Florida, pretty much from Key West to... Uh, Cape Cod is going to be really under the gun here from this strong, uh, fairly strong, but more impactful than strong, honestly, coastal storm aided by this high pressure area right here, 1031 millibar surface high, low pressure to the south, and you get the gradient in between the distance in pressure. Uh, the difference in the pressure over distance creates that gradient. And look at what is coming, all of that that I showed you on the vorticity translates to this with very heavy rain and coastal flooding probably going to see some power outages this is going to be a real real mess let's switch it over to the wind field 10 meter wind so that's pretty much where we live right look at how this cranks up anything in the yellows and reds you're talking pretty close to tropical storm force and higher and that really starts to crank along the outer banks tomorrow where i will be and then finally up into the mid-Atlantic states and the northeast proper from there. That right there, ladies and gentlemen, that is Sunday afternoon. Our friends here in Jersey, and I got a lot of them up there, from Sandy. Thank you very much, Sandy, from 2012. Gotten to know a lot of people because of that one storm, right? Look at all that wind just piling up the water. I'm going to come back on and address you fine people again. That spells trouble if that comes to pass. Just like with hurricanes, there's always room for something to change. But man, oh man, all that uh, wind blowing over all that fetch of water, going to pile up the, uh, the Atlantic against the Jersey Shore there. And I'm going to show you a couple tabs down the road here a piece. We're going to look at some major flooding issues in some of these areas of the Delaware Bay, possibly all the way down to the tidewater of Virginia, and of course the eastern shore of New Jersey, maybe parts of Long Island. This is going to be... A big impact event, it does appear. Nothing is a, a certainty until it happens. Caveat is always there, especially with meteorology. But boy, this is really looking rough at 54 hours out. This is what it looks like on the high resolution model, just to show you. North Carolina, South Carolina tomorrow. Uh, yeah, look at all that rain coming in. And some of these are going to have thunderstorms. Uh, some of these cells, especially in the warm sector. And it's a big spread out coastal storm. Uh, similar to a winter nor'easter, I mean, I guess you can call it a nor'easter, but I think all the messaging is I've seen is re being referred to as a coastal storm, coastal low, a lot of energy with it. So again, National Weather Service, your best friend for info, all kinds of stuff up here. One of the things I want you to use, if you're interested in coastal impacts, right there, rivers, lakes, rainfall, you click on or tap on, whatever you do, that tab and you go to this, which we're going to get to in a minute. First, though, and this is why it's a big deal. You remember Mount Holly? They got a lot of attention during Sandy, and rightfully so. They were really pumping out the messaging, probably helped to save a lot of lives. They're on top of it, as usual, with all kinds of great infographics. Weather Service is really picking up on this. 
Lots and lots of problems coming for our coastal waters. Potentially 59 miles per hour up at Long Branch. That was my first stop on the Monday morning that Sandy was coming in. Story for another day. Uh, but, yeah, you can see 59 in Atlantic City, 59 Cape May. You get the idea. These are some strong gusts Sunday through Monday. Probably going to see some power outages. Very heavy rain overall, 3 to 4 inches. That's not nothing. And this will be very impactful for our friends along the Jersey Shore. Again, back to this. Use that right there, Rivers, Lakes, Rainfall. Click on it. You go to this. Look at all the purples we're seeing. We'll get to that in a minute. I want to zoom in here. This is a great interactive map. Uh, Charleston Harbor, already flooding in major flood stage right now. Water level is at 8.46 feet, which is in major flood stage. Uh, up in South Carolina, looking at potentially uh, flooding there, not quite to moderate. And then the uh, Carolina coast, not too bad along these areas just yet. But once you get north uh, towards the um, duck and their observation platform up there, uh, getting close to, let's see, they're in the, almost a major flooding, but then it really starts to get problematic up here on the south side of the Chesapeake Bay. Anything you see in purple, I don't want to go through all of these because we'll be here all day. You should click on these. Check them out yourselves. Delaware Bay, let me just give you an, an idea here down at Bowers Beach area. The record is um, 8.6, and this is forecast to go to 9.5. So it's forecast on Sunday, 2 p.m., to exceed the record. That is substantial. Why? Because that strong northeast wind is just going to pile up the Delaware Bay right along the southwest coast there. This is a big problem here. All these purples, that is major flooding that is forecast. The reds, nothing to you know take lightly either, potentially for moderate flooding. And all of this can increase or decrease depending on how things shape up. But I just want you to pay attention to it. Be ready just in case this gets worse than what we are seeing. And again, the biggest thing is the strong uh, wind blowing in over that long distance of the Atlantic is what's going to pile everything up. The fetch, that's the, you know, don't look at the intensity. It doesn't look that strong. Wind blowing over a lot of water, that is a big problem, believe you me. All right, uh, every time we get to October 10th, I guess, and as long as I'm alive, I'm going to remind you of this because it is still, until it gets surpassed by something else, our project's greatest achievement. It, a couple of different projects that we have online. This one's the five and some change hour raw, like Cloverfield type footage. You know what I mean? Like it's unedited. Remember that movie Cloverfield? It's not as shaky as Cloverfield though. Um, but this is the raw footage from our YouTube streaming cam that we had in the cars, like the very first year we're using an iPhone to stream to YouTube way back in 2018. And then we switched over to the cam that we set up, uh, which is that one right back there, by the way, the box for it anyway. That's where it is. Um, this is it. So we're talking seven years ago. Category 5, middle of the day, camera at the right spot, point blank range in the right front quadrant. You just can't find a better example, I think. Might be a little biased of exactly what a Category 5 does from start to finish. And if you're interested, I'll put the link in today's discussion. It's all right here. A couple of just examples for you. This is when things were really cranking. Let's get that volume down. And boy, they even got worse from there. That is a Category 5 eye wall. Look at all the debris going by. That's buildings coming apart. And there's the surge coming in. What a day. Again, one of the greatest achievements of our remote camera project uh, in our history. So nothing like that to worry about today. But we have our own problems, which we already just went over. Anyway, I'll put a link to this in the description of today's video. All right, so before I let you go, real quick about my plans. Later this afternoon, I'll be making my way up to the Outer Banks. I figured I could wait a little, little bit longer because it's a slow-moving process. I was going to leave this morning, but I can wait a little longer. So I'm going to go up there, set a couple few cameras up around Rodanthe and Buxton, and then as long as Highway 12 is not closed tomorrow morning, south of the Oregon Inlet, that's usually where it closes, I will go north and make my way into the mid-Atlantic states up here, Delaware, Maryland, Jersey, and cover this uh, Saturday and Sunday in that region, both with some remote cam set up, don't know exactly where yet, working on that, got a couple of ideas, and then just live from the Tacoma, you know, the streaming 
Cam from the uh, the windshield there, right on the boardwalk. I know people up in that part of New Jersey probably stop and say hi to them, and uh, it's going to be really, really something else. Um, and we haven't seen anything like this in a while, so get ready. It's coming, and I'll be there as long as I can get off of Hatteras Island to show you what happens live on YouTube throughout the weekend. All right? All right. Long video today, but we had a lot to cover. Thanks for sticking through it with me. I am Mark Suddeth. I'll see you throughout the weekend.